Now, these people have advanced in their knowledge of divination to a level, a level of accuracy. The lens of divination has been adjusted to accommodate accuracy. What the Ifa priest prophesies comes to pass. In fact, most of our tribes are settled where they are settled today because of divination. And there was no stronger tribe in Nigeria today in divination than our brothers from the West. But there was a revival that overcame that foundation. And whether you like it or not, there is a prophetic spirit that is hanging over people from Western Nigeria. It's not, it's not natural. It came through the witness of a man. When you see that Western Nigeria received the gospel, most of us don't know what it means. <laughs> Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid there their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, now, please follow what Peter said. Number one, thy money perish with thee. Why? Because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. There's a preacher on the pulpit, he boasted that he took a certain amount to a certain preacher and received his anointing. <laughs> and people were saying, hallelujah, <laughs> amen, <laughs> Jesus. That was what earned this money cost. Thy money perish with thee. Because what? Thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Number two, go on. Can you see the second statement? He said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. It means you are not born again. You cannot mingle among us. You have no part. And it is the spirit of God that drew that war. You can't mix because we are separated. We cannot talk about unity until we talk about the issue of separation. If you are separated unto God and I'm separated unto God, you, we don't need to preach unity. We will blend because our values are one. Our pursuits are one. Our desires are one. The reason why we've been trying to do, you, you know, how many of you were part of student union when you were on campus? Union is not unity. The moment the object of our separation is one, then uni unity is possible. Unity is possible. Unity is possible. There's a certain place that I don't, I decided, not God, me, I decided that I would not preach here because of several things that happened. So a preacher came and invited me from there. In my heart, it was already known. But I said I should ask God. And God approved. And I was wondering why God did not honor my my desire not to preach. Until I now went for the invitation and I saw that we had the same God. And that he had gone to our God and asked him, bring that man. Even though I did not want to go, I found myself there and I found a brother. A brother basking in the fires of God. Are you there? So it was no longer about my own human persuasion. My position was overruled because he was in touch with the God of our fathers. You don't, you don't need to preach unity. If we are separated unto the same God, we will find alignment. When you begin to hear people say, you know, believers, we don't love ourselves. This, <laughs> calm down. Don't, go, if, go and look for your glasses and put it on and watch him. 
He's trying to push for ecumenism because he's standing on foreign ground. Standing on strange ground. The man says, well, you have no part in this matter. There is no portion of our allotment that falls to you. You are a stranger to this economy. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This is the first time I've seen a man that was able to detect a man's heart. Because in the Old Testament, it was, it said, men look on the heart world, but God looks on the, this man picked his heart. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You are not yet born again, but you'll be masquerading. And evangelist Philip had baptized this man. He had baptized him. The man was already gone in to become assistant pastor in the move. Because Satan wanted to orchestrate an occasion of a mixed multitude in that revival. And then the apostles came. You have no part in this matter. Is there someone that is making you comfortable with compromise? Is there someone that is making you no longer care about your life of fornication? I cried from this platform as I was teaching on sanctification, which is a core doctrine area in New Testament Christianity. I was led by the Lord to begin to build our foundations of faith again. And I started from the Old Testament to show us how that God was holy. And in order for us to walk with God, we will have to be holy. It is impossible to do business with a God that is holy if you are not like him. And I, I did a very detailed study of how the children of Israel, they were going to partner with God, but it was impossible to partner with God because of the nature of God's holiness. And the entire book of Leviticus was written to see the sacrifices and the things that were required in order to make sinful man to walk with a holy God. That's the reason for which the entire book of Leviticus was written in order to reveal the basis of our sanctification, if we were going to interact and to have business with a God that is holy. Are you there? I also showed that anywhere God was, was considered holy. And that the, the latitude of the temple was measured according to degrees of holiness. We have the outer court. We have the holy place. Then we have what? The holy of holies. That if you are going to operate in intimacy with God, you'll be confronted by his bold nature of holiness. And that should make you adjust. If you, in, in case you want to do business with the God that is between the cherubims. In fact, those days, when the high priest is going into the Holy of Holies to transact with God, there is a rope that is used to tie his waist. Just in case he stands before God and God doesn't find him in the context of holiness. God will kill him. So when God kills him, nobody can go into the Holy of Holies. They will use that rope to draw him out of the presence of God and go and bury him. It means that the priest doesn't even know if the status of his right standing until he stands before Jehovah. So in the New Testament, to avoid slaughter, what was done in the New Testament is that the blood of Jesus becomes the token. Uh, it, the blood is already dead. That means we are dead. We are already dead. Uh, death is already smelling. And then it's under the death of Jesus that he has accepted that we can now come boldly. The God in the New Testament has not changed from the old one. But you see, the philosophy of the New Testament is that you come to God and begin to deal with God. The moment you begin to see the way he is, that he is holy, all right, you, through repentance, will begin to adjust, to accommodate the fact that he doesn't change. This is how he is. So, and the blood of Jesus is available to take care of our errors when we see him and we discover that we are not like him. That blood is available to make us right with him so that we can keep joining with him. The, the idea is that as we keep joining with him, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing until we sustain the very image of Christ where we become reflective of God in everything that we do 24 hours in a day. I cried from here. That don't claim you are a minister of the gospel when you are dwelling perpetually in iniquity. Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? What, we are not the same. If you can dwell perpetually in iniquity, it means you have not met the God of redemption. 
because if I, if I make a mistake, the Holy Ghost will, I will know he has left. And he will show me his displeasure, 100%. He cannot cope up, he cannot keep up with this kind of character. He's so sensitive. You will never know him until you come close. When you come close, you will now discover what is the name of your God. Some people went somewhere for healing and they had to take water and drink the water and then there's one, one altar there, they will bow down before it, bow down you, you know wear shoes. What, what did you just do? Bowing down before an altar, an image? Ah. The devil has done over time on your case. Receive grace to stand in your conviction, even if it's not popular. When you find a preacher whose message does not divide, you know, if I begin to preach about Jesus, anyone serving Satan will know that I've exposed him. Are you following? If your message does not divide, it, it's pampas Satanists, in pampas Christians, pampas thieves, Pampas fornicators, you say, you know, this balanced teaching, where in the middle, you know, so that everybody will, you, you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a man pleaser. I hope you have seen it in the Bible that if I'm a man pleaser, I cannot be in the service of God. God will make you different. He will not make you popular, he will make you different. What it means to be holy is that you are different. Wait, listen, listen, listen. If we go to the market and we buy 10 cups and we take five cups to the temple, the same cups. We we'll say these ones, we have brought them for God. Then we we'll now take five, the rest of the five, take them home. If the priest comes and anoints those cups, from the day the anointing came on the cups, the cups can no longer be used for any human thing. It's only good for use in the service of God. So these cups are called holy cups. The same cups. The ones you use to give people water, give your baby water, you used to pour water into the, the, the radiator of your car. Those cups that have been dedicated to God cannot be used for mundane purposes. Those ones now only have use in the service of God. So those cups, even though they look alike, they are different. Holiness will make you different. The way normal common people that fornicate in the market are, you will be different. The way normal people do business, that's not how you will do business. You will be different. The way normal everyday pastors do ministry, that's not how you will be. You will be different. If it is not evident that you are different, what you have sold for, what you have bought is called ecumenism. You want to be in the center so that politically you look right, you look correct. You look like the one that is trying to bring everybody together. But what you are doing is idolatry. When God descends in the land, it is such as you that he will destroy first. That compromise, when God comes, he will destroy you first. Because you are the very image of, of compromise. The Nigerian church was a golden church of Africa. The revival that sprang forth from our borders was unequaled in the stories of revival that we hear. You've heard about Azusa? It's just that what happened on our soil was not documented. And that's our, our limitation. It wasn't doc documented. We, we've, 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 I've read about many mighty men that rose in the nations of the world. There's no story that I've read about that comes anywhere near what happened through that man, Apostle Joseph Babalola. Near! No story. But you see, it wasn't documented. So we believe it, it never happened. A man that during praise and worship, as they are singing praise and, like we just did, he, he levitates. When you see that Western Nigeria received the gospel, most of us don't know what it means. <laughs> it was when, when I was to marry my wife, they were based in Ileife. So I used to go to Ileife to see the family and stuff like that until we got married. And when we now got married, I, I was working in Lagos, so I was going to visit my in-laws once and again. That was when I discovered what was in that city. Now, these people have advanced in their knowledge of divination. 
to a level. A level of accuracy. The lens of divination has been adjusted to accommodate accuracy. What the Ifa priest prophesies comes to pass. In fact, most of our tribes are settled where they are settled today because of divination. And there was no stronger tribe in Nigeria today in divination than our brothers from the West. But there was a revival that overcame that foundation. And whether you like it or not, there is a prophetic spirit that is hanging over people from Western Nigeria. It's not, it's not natural. It came through the witness of a man. During prison, he doesn't want to raise the dead, he's just worshiping God, and he sees that angels will lift him up. Are you there? So I have a chronicle in my library, a very fat chronicle. Somebody took time to put the details of that man's life together and they sent me a copy. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know who sent it, but it's in my life. None of the things you read in God's generals comes close to what God did through that man. Are you talking about people that were raised from the dead? That was, that's lunch, that's, that's lunch box issues. Are you talking about healing, sicknesses? In fact, the man operated in healing to a point that he became tired of praying for the sick. And he went and prayed over a little stream that was in his neighborhood. And people were going into the stream for healing. And how many years, 20 something years after he died, a madman still entered that stream and came back healed. The, 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 the will of God, the dimensions of the expectations of God concerning the potential of the church in this nation was, was eclipsed by darkness. And what we have today in its best is a state of compromise. And this state of compromise was occasioned by the violation of several principles that are critical to maintaining the civilizations that come from God. So if Satan wants to downgrade the quality of Christianity, what he does is that he gets people from his camp to become pastors. And then he makes sure that these pastors have a loud voice. And guess what? These guys will be pushing for the golden plan. And the golden plan is ecumenism. In ecumenism, let us come together. You are different, I'm different. We have a different God. You you have a different God. You worship something else. But for, for political correctness, let us just be together. So the golden plan of Satan, of the spirit of the Antichrist, is to push for ecumenism. And in ecumenism, we are heterogeneous. In ecumenism, we are not of the same sort. We don't worship the same God. We don't subscribe to the same principles. We are not operating from the same source. We don't have the same values. But so that we, we, it will look as if we are one, let us unite. Somebody's an easy mo. He has an altar. He dance, dances to the spirit naked in the night. Oh, 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 but ecumenism will recommend that it is in our interest to be one. But if we try to subscribe to ecumenism, you will discover that what will drive our civilization will be the loss of the mixed multitude. Under such circumstances, the mixed multitude will become powerful, more powerful than the original lot. And because of that, we'll provide concessions to accommodate uh, the mixed multitude in such a way that there will be no crisis. And in that compromise, what we have done is that we have violated the principles of separation. And the product is going to be corruption and what? And violence. The church in the wilderness journeyed from the land of captivity into the land of promise. The church in the wilderness stopped 42 times in the journey. Are you there? So there were 42 stations that the church stopped. And by the time you go to the book of Matthew, you are going to see in the book of Matthew when the generations of, of ancestors leading to Christ was captured in the book of Matthew, you are going to see that it was 42 generations. 
which is consistent with the 42 stations that Israel stopped when they were transiting from the house of bondage into the house of promise. So if we study the church in the wilderness accurately, you will see a prophetic journey of the church of Jesus in every age. In fact, you can even trace and track where the American church is in that, in that journey. You can trace and track where the Ghanaian church is on that journey. So what I want to do now is to show you that even in the church in, in the wilderness, Satan had already pioneered this principle of removing separation from the advancement so that anything that God gets at the end of the day will be a compromised position. And the glory of God in its entirety and fullness will not be able to rest on that civilization because it doesn't look like the arrangement that is established in the heavens. Meanwhile, the idea of God is that that will be done on earth the same way it is done in heaven. Forgive me, I'm not called to preach to you babes. I bear a rod from God. This is the same message I preach to kings. I, it doesn't change. If you cast me away, I have transport to go back home. So when I go, I... I take homina like A politician invited me and said, we, we, we heard you hear God. So I want to contest for an election. Can you ask God and find out if I'm going to win? I said, that's very simple. So I went to the hotel that they gave me. Prayed from morning till evening the first day. Prayed from morning to afternoon. And in the afternoon while I was still speaking in tongues, I saw a vision. I saw the guy that invited me. He stumbled on two stones and he fell and he couldn't stand up. I packed my things. And you know when you go on trips like that, go with transport. Okay. The man I'm talking about, if you stand before him, you will lie. He, he has stature. So what I did was that I didn't look at him. I looked this way. I said, Don't say the Lord! Do not contest. You will fail. And you will utterly fall. Guess what? My transport money became relevant. He didn't even survive in the primaries because he attempted that election. The witches in the neighborhood found fault with him. You know, in the vision, he stumbled, he fell, he utterly fell. He couldn't. Uh, he needed me again even after the election because the witches struck him and he was afflicted. So he didn't, he was calling me the second time not to find out about his, his prospects, but to deliver him from, from affliction. The real church is about to emerge from the fallen one. Yes. If, if, you know, when you begin to keep your conviction, keep your commitment to God, and people, all that believers will say, ah, the way you are praying is this. Did you sin? What is it? When you hear that, it is an attempt to diminish your brightness. The real church is about to rise up. Let me tell you, there's going to be a massive separation. The gap between the false light and the true light that has been dwelling side by side, the gap will start becoming wider. The reason is because of the presence of true apostolic people that can bear witness of the reality of the living God. The other day, somebody sent a, a, a text. I said, we will kill you, we will kill you. You know what? Don't send a text. If you see me, kill me. You're sending texts for weak people. If it is given unto you to do it, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. You don't know the fire that, that the God I shall carries. You will need more than a threat to, to stop us. I have seen death, death, death turn backward. Witches invoked death to take me and he actually came. I saw death turn backward. My end will not come by blight. It will not come by a bomb. It will only be because the God of heaven says it's time to come. When you see us, kill us. Don't send text me. That's for weak people. We died long time ago. You can't threaten me with death. The true church is about to emerge. And the great divide will be wider. It will, it, you will know the sorcerers 
in a short while because of the breezing black brightness of the light of God that will come from his true witnesses. Oh my God. You know, I was at the airport, which day was that was? When we were we at the airport. So somebody confronted me with scriptures. And he said, are we really Christians or we are saints? I knew where he was going. Because in following Christianity, what we present to the people is the structure, the internal structure. How that it is possible for you to be born again and it's a reality that your heart bears witness to and there's no evidence outside. Meanwhile, your spirit became recreated and the evidence to prove that your spirit is regenerated is that they are fruit of the regenerated human spirit, which are evident to see. Huh? When you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost was that you spoke in tongues. There was something external. And the ultimate evidence is that you have the capacity to walk with the Holy Ghost, be led by the Holy Ghost, and become a creature that manifests everything that is in the will of God. Are you there? There was nothing that God did that there was no external dimension to it. So if you say, if you say that the, the unbelievers were the guys that called us Christians, so we are not Christians. What we are are saints, because that's the position that we attain by new birth. It means that you are accepting that a coin has only one side. You are accepting that you can clap with one hand. Because those things you ask are two sides of the same coin. It's the front and the back end. If I'm born again, there should be a manifestation. Yes, if I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, there should be what? A manifestation. And if you study your Bible, you find out that one of the qualifications for eldership is that an elder should have a good report even among all believers. And it's the unbelievers that gave us the name Christian. And what it means in Greek is lead to Christ. They were manifesting Christ. They were from different languages, different tribes, but there was one thing that was a common denominator among them. The life of Christ was revealed through their vessel. It was an observation testimony. By the time we finished the theology, there, were, there was no question. Because there's a campaign to begin. Half truth is not truth, it's deception. It's holding the truth in unrighteousness. Can we pray? Can we pray that God will help us keep our conviction, even though it may not be popular? Your conviction may not be popular. But it's in keeping with the civilization of the heavenlies for you to be homogeneous. I serve God and I serve God only. Oh. We cast out, we were, we were doing deliverance somewhere in northern Nigeria. And we found this witch very equipped with demonic power and she was caught up by the Holy Ghost and came down and the power of darkness broke from her but there was a power she desired to retain which is a power to look at you if she's angry and afflict you so even though the deliverance took place she was brought into church she liked being in the choir she was already in the choir but she retained her power so that if anybody tries her it will use as long as she held on to the power, she was not of Jesus. As long She didn't let go that power, even though she was integrated into church life, she was a stranger. God came again, this time to kill. That was when she let go the power on the eyes and became altogether of Jesus. I met her some years ago and she didn't have that power. She was a follower, ardent follower of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, can we stop the mixtures? Can we stop the mixtures? God wants one pure breed. When Jesus looked, he saw one of his disciples coming. He said, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile of one sort, of one kind, of one fashion, of one principle, of one source. For there is one God and one faith, one baptism, even one Lord Jesus Christ. It's one, 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 one. Because he wants one, he wants one. He wants one. Can we ask God? Oh my God. 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 That the Lord will give us the grace to be irritated by anything that is not of the Holy Ghost. The wall must be put in place 
in order for us to preserve the civilization that comes from heaven. I will walk the path of righteousness. I will travel on the streets of holiness. My generation might call me a Jew, a man that is laid back, but the fire of the glory of God will burn upon my spirit. Oh, arise, arise, shine, because your light is come. We will not sell out. We will not be compromised. God wants a pure breed, a new generation without greed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness. Kenya Subela Tomendi Isa Makondo Gatobela Sibreke Esosela Ikabaito Kobe Malias Eskobre Maliko Bamalatala Yalobo Kose Briska Mendolo Elias Sige Raska Tonde Bayi Ayato Boko Lante Eskilo I will not sell out I will keep my garment wide. My head shall not lack ointment. I serve the Lord Jesus. Cast away that weight. Cast off that sin. Come into the light. Sebri ala baboko santari. Abra kasketo bonde laliske hebre babodokosia. Abriska fella monde, la calabon tamir, la calabasalaya, and rasketo benacate, rababodo cosedia la baboconda, abramena cude, asica palatua, a brante kesco, prega da vivo cose, ayabo bobo sante, ayabo sicabaya, abracata babolo corea, escatolia, iso santa baia, a brevete, a lago santa, a lava la laborea. Escapina Kademakos, a Presco Tabalaya, a Brahma Sande, a Brahma Katapotenda, a Sabahata Brahmaboya, a Sobria Lababoleva, Shabahatan, Urama Babo Soto, Yelebebo Soto, Yelebebo Soto, Shalina Kandeboria, Lisele, in the name of Jesus. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings and with twine, he covered his face and with twine, he covered his feet. And with twine, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. As long as that compromise sets in, where we become like the people we were sent to deliver, we lose the authority to deliver them. That's what ecumenism does. It makes you look, have the same weaknesses with the people that God has raised you to deliver out of darkness. I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell and miss a people of unclean lips. Do you realize that that guy was in that state all the while he didn't know? He was prophesying to different nations. It was when he came under the atmosphere of the divine holiness of God, he knew that he was only ordained in the environment. And he cried, Whoa, this me. A revelation of the holiness of God. A revelation, oh my God, of his awesome holiness and majesty. That was what delivered Isaiah. Huh. Can we cry? I said, Lord, don't allow me to be like the people you have sent me to deliver. Don't allow me to be like the individuals you raised me to call out of the darkness. Let the call of fire be placed upon my tongue that I might be parched afresh so that I'll be ready for greater assignments in the kingdom of God. Take the garment of compromise from me. Hey, Kurenasi, Orobo, Siko Preskito Bandela, Ilamo Zakatale Bondele, Okombayis, Preskofilande, 
That's the only way you can take charge of California. That's the only way you can bear witness in New York. That's the only way the altars of Europe will submit to you. Purge us afresh. Make us clean. Make us carry the brilliance of your purity so that it will be clear that we are different from darkness. We are different from gloominess. Sufi Lakataya. Ikobos. Belig. Buma Seki Labokada. Rusketa Mendi. Roke Sobo Korea. Kemo Seke Lia Timusa. Prisco Pamalite. Esukeba Makade. Oh, let the call of fire come my way. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Ileko. Baye koski do bondo do bosan. Ika moskete brande kuria branda babo kosante. In the name of Jesus. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Why? Because in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver. But also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore shall purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. Is the extent of a man's body that prepares him for noble task in the kingdom of God. So when you find a man gaining mileage and the hand of God is intense upon him, what he did was that he subjected himself for purging. Yeah, he subjected himself to the protocol of purging. Hey, hey, will you allow him purging? That your anger cannot travel with him. Your wickedness cannot travel with him. The pornography that you are beginning to like in the night cannot travel with it. And you will decide that you need to be purged. It is when you decide to be purged, ah, you are considered for more noble kingdom tasks. You can decide to be silver. You can decide to be gold. You can decide to be wood. You can decide to be stubble. And you must, you must understand that when the test that will, that will determine your worth is the test of fire. So if you put stubble in fire, what will happen to it? You put wood in fire, what will happen to it? But you put gold in fire, it purifies it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can we invite Jehovah Methodist? The one that sits in the seat of refiner and purify our silver. Take away the dross. Take away the alloy. Take away the mixture. 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 I submit for potting, 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 for potting. I am not of this world. Thank you for watching. 
do well to subscribe like share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what god is doing from this platform you can also follow us on all our social media platforms we are on instagram we are on facebook and we are on twitter thank you